All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and we're going to be talking about how to use the color replacement tool inside of Adobe Photoshop so that you can quickly change colors on different objects on the fly in order to, you know, well, change colors quickly so that, like, let's put up a, a hypothetical situation. So I've got this picture of this model. She's wearing a floral dress. I just grabbed this off of Google Images. And let's say that I have a client that came to me and said, Larry, we just designed this new floral dress and we need to send a picture of it to one of our investors, but we don't have the new version with the new colors to send to them yet. We only have the original. Can you change some of the colors of the flowers so that they can get a good idea and decide if they want to give us the dollars. And so with the color replacement tool, we can zoom in here and we can change like every other one of these flowers in order to make them look like they're multicolored. And then we can send it off to whatever hypothetical client we have and we can do it quickly, painlessly, without a lot of fiddling around with adjustment layers and all sorts of other stuff. But of course, my general rule of thumb is I always make a copy of all of my layers here in our layers palette just so that I don't lose anything in case I need to go back and make a quick change. I don't have to do it over a bajillion times. So the color replacement tool is over here in the sidebar. It's underneath of your regular brush and your pencil tool, and it's right next to the mixing brush tool, and it's called, well, the color replacement tool and it gives you just a regular old paintbrush and it'll take whatever color you have selected in your side tools panel and apply it to whichever one of these objects here that you want it to and it's just going to quickly sample these colors and it's going to change them to sort of like a pinkish purple on the fly and it'll try and sort of match up the different tones and like lightnesses and darknesses pretty decently when you just use the default color replacement mode. And then if you're just really careful, you get down on the pixel level and you can quickly just change that color. Unfortunately, we did get a little bit of bleed over here. So we've got some sort of like pinkish white coloration, but there from a distance or even from pretty decently close up, aside from this little color bleed here, it looks pretty good. I mean, this color replace tool is actually pretty smart about what it does, although sometimes you got to do a couple of passes and you've got to do it like at like small scales on the pixel level just to make sure that it looks pretty good because, you know, when the dollars are on the line or even when your own personal reputation is on the line, you can't be fiddling around with slightly discolored white dresses. Isn't that right, Larry? Well, you're not wrong, side voice. You're not wrong. So... That's not bad, but we have a couple of other options back here. If I back it up to when I duplicated that layer that we can use to mess around with this. So the primary thing you're probably going to want to mess with at home is the different color modes. You've got the default color, which will just change the color flat out to whatever you've got selected. But you could also select hue. And if we zoom in here with the brush, you'll notice that it's a little bit darker. So what Hue is doing is it's taking the color value of whatever we've selected to put here inside of this flower, and it's using the luminosity value or the brightness of whatever color you're trying to change it from, and it makes it blend with the original image just a little bit better if you're trying to just replace a color so that it looks natural within your image. So as I trace back over this, it's a little bit darker, it looks like it actually belongs in this room on this model's body so that she can like actually look like she took this during a photo shoot in case you're trying to prototype this for a client, which is part of what I've used this for in the past. I've also used it to change some colors on the model of fitness roller so that it looked correct when they were getting in the new colors for people so they could start selling it immediately. There's all sorts of reasons why you might want to change the colors, and that's a kind of a more believable looking purple, 
Although I do need to do a couple little touch-ups where there's kind of like some blue peeking through. That's not bad. Now back it up again. And we could also change it to the lumosity um, of whatever color we've selected. So instead of changing the color here, it'll actually change this blue to be a slightly lighter tone to whatever I have selected in my color swatch. So it's going to look at the brightness of the color, and then that's going to change when I select lumosity for the blending mode. So as you can see, it's starting to kind of look bright, like it's kind of kind of blown out a little bit, like it's too bright. The colors are just not quite set up correctly. And it's, it's looking kind of grayed out, but let's back that up again. And let's select like, I don't know, like a darker color. And now it's going to make this rose a much darker blue. And that would be something you do if you need to like replace a color and it needs to look like it's sort of in a nighttime environment or in a dark room or maybe it's just it's too bright and you want to try and bring out some of the details while also changing the color a little bit. There's all sorts of reasons why you'd want to change something like that and it's really up to you to figure out when you need to do that because you can typically look at something and decide if you need to change its lumosity value. Now the other thing we've got the saturation level so we can change these saturations on the go. I've picked a very muted kind of gray color. So this is actually going to adjust the saturation value to a more grayish muted blue because I selected a very grayish muted purple color. So you can change the saturation on the fly. You can change the color on the fly. You can just change the hue value so it looks more natural. There's all sorts of different stuff that you can do with this. And I actually kind of like that, actually. That's actually kind of a nice purpley blue, darker color. Yeah. Let me have a little bit of water. Uh, you don't want your, uh, you don't want your throat getting too dry when you're trying to teach people how to do the stuff with the things, Larry. It's bad. All right. So the other kinds of options that you've got up here, we'll just go through them real quick. You can select different sampling modes. The one I'm using currently is continuous, so whatever I draw over is going to be changed to whatever color I've selected. I'm actually going to select hue again for my for my mode. You can also select sampling once so that it will only, um, you know, say change the blue colors and then it won't inadvertently change the white colors or vice versa. So with sample once, I could grab this white area and it will no longer adjust any of this blue. It'll only adjust the colors that match the white that I selected. Let me just change this to color once more. So we're going to just grab this gray color. So it'll change any of that gray now, but it won't change anything that doesn't share that gray values color. So I can actually change the color of her dress around the flowers if I wanted to with this. And then you wouldn't have to worry about the flowers getting changed, you know, with a weird color change. And it does a decent job of blending with some of these white highlight areas as well. But it, it doesn't super discern between some of the colors. So some of the grayer sort of muted blue tones in here are also getting changed. So just be aware that if the tones are kind of similar, even if they're a different color, this can still change it when you sample once. Now. You've also got this other thing that will sample whatever you have selected as their background color. That's the swatch over here that's in the for the background underneath of the first swatch. So this will only then change colors that are white. Again, you know, just gives you options to control your color variations. If you're, you know, changing the color of large swaths in, say, a comic book, but that's not really what I'm doing. So what I want to do is I want to leave this, well, I probably want to use this discontiguous, but discontiguous just means that it's going to select whatever color um, around it and change it from your original selection point. Contiguous only selects around your selection point and find edges will try to determine the edge of an object that you're trying to change and then not change it any further. Let's go back to continuous sampling. So see, it, it's doing an okay-ish job trying not to get too far out of the of the flower. And not great, but not bad either. If 
we've got find edges on. Personally, I just like to use it on default. The fancier tools tend to get you in trouble unless you've really practiced with this. And then your tolerance just gives it more room to find colors that it needs to adjust around it. So it'll look for, you know, okay, I've got a dark color, but I'm willing to dip into the lighter colors. And it lets you kind of mess around with those variances. And if you ever need to reference any of this material, you can just Google these tools. And Adobe's got a lot of free reference material that you can read. So anyway, let's go back to discontiguous, and I want to go back to hue. And let's start recoloring this lovely dress so that I can send it to our hypothetical client. So it's kind of a blue color. So we're going to start with a nice kind of pink color here. And let's just change a handful of these different flowers so that they match our hypothetical clientele situation. So they told me that I've got some pink flowers in here. Just change a few of them to give them idea. Let's just say that I have some reference material that they sent me via an email. So I'm going to change this flower. I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for any sort of off color blue pixels. Like there's one right here and a hiding in the stem of this flower. And then, so that's one flower down. Let's go change one over here. So this is nice and color-coded. Being careful, of course, not to delve too far into the different white colors. And I'll actually turn that tolerance to probably 50. That gives me a nice, like, it's intelligent enough to kind of change whatever, but it won't delve too deeply into the whites because I don't want that to happen. I'd prefer to use a nice, big brush to make this not take 50 years, you know? Because I'm... I'm a bit uh, impatient when it comes to recoloring dresses. Who knew I was such a dress recoloring snob? I mean, I wouldn't have guessed personally. So we'll just change this bad boy down here. Oh, look at that. It's looking great. Oh man, I'm super excited. I'm sure our potential investor is going to love these dresses. Um, he or she is probably going to buy them for all of the lovely ladies down at whatever nightclubs they frequent, if they are even into that. Because I don't know if you've ever been to a nightclub, but those can be really loud and obnoxious, and I don't really even know who they're for. I don't even know how you're going to pick anyone up there, either. I mean, you can't even say hi to them. You wouldn't even know what their name is. They're like, hey person, can we be friends now? That's exactly, that's exactly how that conversation would go. Let's be hip buddies. So... I just kind of want a good cross-section for this color, and then we'll add... like a green somewhere. Maybe like a lightish green, once we've got a few of these selected. And this is obviously, with only a few cup, like a few minutes, we can really quickly start to completely change the identity of this floral dress. By just making it so that it keeps the lumosity value so it looks like it belongs in the image with all of the proper shadows in all of the proper places. And it doesn't look natural too much at all. Although some of these white pixels are getting a little bit of a purple contrast. So let's put the tolerance down really low. We don't want too many pixels changing. And let's make one more change over here to one of these flowers. Beautiful. And now let's go for like kind of like a bluish green. We want this to look floral, but we also want this to be both a natural color that would make sense in this image because you wouldn't have like stark neon contrast that would look like gross and kind of barfy. You don't want barfy colors. No, no barfy colors allowed unless that's what your clients into. I don't judge. We've all had weird things that we've made colors for. Even if our client is just your gaming buddies that you want to make a quick avatar for on Steam or Origin, we won't talk about why you shouldn't be on that service. Although I hear they've got a really cool new $5 a month sort of service where you can rent games all willy-nilly and you won't have to worry about a flipping thing. You can just play them and then it's like a Netflix of games from Origin. I think, what was it? Uh, NVIDIA does the same thing for about 10 bucks a month. And you can play them to your heart's content, and then chuck them, and you're not out any dough. You can move right on to the next one. Isn't that just the fanciest sounding thing? 
I think it sounds all right if you really like EA games on Origin, or at least what's listed in their library of stuff you'll be able to check out. So that's actually looking pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'm liking that. Liking that a lot. We'll leave some blue though. We gotta have some of that original blue for whatever reason. I don't ask what clients do when they design stuff. That just leads to weird questions and even weirder answers. So let's do one more flower over here. There we go. And let's round this puppy dog off with like an orange, but not a gross kind of poopy orange. That kind of looks like a weird poopy brown. How does this look? That looks, uh, it doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad at all. Let's just throw some of that in. A little crispy color to, uh, to accent everything. Eh, I'm not liking that, actually. No orange. Oranges are not allowed. Uh, a yellow? You know, I bet we could do, like, an orangey yellow. That would probably look pretty spiffy. Kind of like a sunflower going on here. There we are. We'll change a couple of those. And one of this one and this one, just so it sticks out more. It kind of looks like a burnt color. I might I might try to change that color outright. Let's just do that. Let's go str just outright change that color. Yeah, boy. Whoops. Now we're getting into the area where the lumosity is not making up for my uh, large brush stroke anymore. So we need to be careful. Let's switch this to contiguous so it kind of limits where the colors bleed into one another. And let's just go back to discontiguous with... So there, there we go. We'll just say that we'll clean that up later. And then let's add a couple of them up here. Oh yes. You're gorgeous, darling. Oh, well, that's... That's a little too sloppy. I'm not, I'm not happy with that. There we are. So we it just, just draw and it's kind of whatever you feel like. You're the graphic designer. You're the one who gets the final call before you send it off to your client for approval or disapproval um, or demerits as the case may be. And whatever you feel is what you're comfortable giving them, it's completely up to you. And sometimes it's going to be back and forth a lot when you're trying to get something somebody's happy with. Because sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes they just don't necessarily know what they want or what colors they want on it or maybe some color They just change their mind before they go to production and they go get it printed or something. These are things that happen Don't take them personally But just be aware that they might occur and see look at that. Look how awesome that is if we Sort of zoom out. That's a wonderful floral dress. That's full of all these colors you're probably not going to mess with a dress, but this was just in, like, something I just googled. Floral patterns, and this lady showed up, so there you have it. And I will include this image in the video description for you guys to mess around with if you want to practice for yourself. Using the color replace tool, you could even change the color of her lips to, like, um, like a neon purple. We could totally do that. So she looks like a total neon, um... Cyberpunk from the future? Yeah, that would totally not be weird. Not weird at all. There you go. Perfect. So, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you use the color replace tool as best as I can suggest it to you. I mean, if you have a situation where you need to quickly and quietly replace a color, this is a great tool. You might also want to just grab that area with a selector, uh, like a quick select wand up here and then just change it with hue and saturation or a colors adjustment layer. I mean, it's completely up to you. These are just a lot of tools that you can use to get that done. So until next time, I've been your host, Larry. This has been another Chupacabra tutorial. Catch you guys and gals next time, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Toodles, everybody.